Hello, thank you for clicking on this link. I'm Dan Pfister, and this is Healthcare Conversations. Today's guest is Professor Dr. Brahm Desmet. Professor Dr. Brahm Desmet is a professor of operations and supply chain at Vlerik Business School, Ghent University in Belgium. A guest lecturer at Peking University, a keynote speaker, CEO of Solventure, and an author. Brom connects supply chain, strategy, and finance through financial metrics and shows how supply chain is the centerpiece of business. His brand new book, The Strategy-Driven Supply Chain, Integrating Strategy, Finance, and Supply Chain for a Competitive Edge, provides insights into how supply chain, strategy, and finance are interlinked. Uh, you are the CEO of uh, Solventure, a offering supply chain sales and operations training and advanced analytics. Uh, you are also a professor of operations and supply chain at the Blerick Business School in Ghent, Belgium, and also a guest lecturer at Peking University. Um, on June 26th in the Wevegem, and I probably killed that name, uh, Belgium, um, you know, we're Americans, all we know how to say is the New York and Boston. Um, but uh, you will be uh, speaking at a leadership meeting for uh, Baker, a world leader in steel wire transformation and coding technologies on how supply chain strategy and finance are related. And then in October 18th in Hamburg, uh, Germany, you will be the keynote speaker for a Gartner Chief Supply Chain Officer Forum addressing supply chain strategy and financial metrics. And this month, on May 25th, your second book will be available from Amazon, The Strategy-Driven Supply Chain, Integrating Strategy, Finance, and Supply Chain for a Competitive Edge. And I will have all the links below in the, in the description. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give that uh, background a little bit uh, before we get going. Um, I, I have to admit, I, I've only recently become familiar with your work. Uh, and to be honest, I had to do some uh, quick learning and research. Uh, so, uh, um, so, so we'll see how good I do, Professor, in your class. Um, <laughs> no, but, no examination today. Yeah, let's yeah, keep good. It, let's... <laughs> good. Those are, good. Uh, those are the, the things I can excel at. Then. Uh, yeah. Not being tested is something I'm good at. Um, uh, but, but I tell you, when I, when I became aware of your supply chain triangle concept, I thought it would be relevant to the audience that I'm trying to gear my videos to. And as you and I have talked a little bit via email, um, my focus is really on healthcare supply chains and logistics and the connection points that they have to patient care, safety, service, and quality. Um, just like uh, any uh, um, manufacturing company, uh, hospitals have internal organizations very, you know, similar to all businesses that focus on strategic sourcing, purchasing operations, and finance. And these departments are often working towards different objectives and performance metrics. And your triangle where you talk about service costs and cash, not understanding the relationship between those can cause internal challenges misaligned values, cost overruns, and service issues to the end customer. And again, in healthcare, the end customer is a patient and the product is really uh, the, the clinical therapy, right? Um, as I understand your work, you're advocating that the way to balance internal boundaries and even external boundaries is with a comprehensive strategy and then manage it all with, with practical metrics. So if that's a fair description of your approach, I, I was wondering if we could, we could just start with the, the supply chain triangle, the service cost and cash. And, uh, and again, if I'll, I'll promise I'll shut up in just a second, but to just this high level, um, you describe the supply chain triangle as, as again, service cost and cash and optimizing that balance, getting the best return on capital employed um, the, the, getting that bang for the buck that a business is looking for. But you've pointed out that internal organizations can have different incentives that drive the supply chain towards different metrics. Uh, in industry, a product leader may be defined by flexibility. He's focused on time to market and innovations, um, the newest and the latest. And, and so it's gonna be the higher cost, higher capital employed in that scenario. An operations excellence player is looking at efficiency, driving cost out, focused on cost and capital, which may be contrary to the product leader, 
And then the customer intimacy uh, play or sales or, or customer service is defined by delivering compact, complex solutions to the customer. They might maintain a large portfolio. They might be uh, focused on more advanced uh, um, forecasting and inventory management. So, so all of that to frame it, if, if both in industry and again, in, in my realm of focus in healthcare, supply chain is often a back of house organization. H how can it become more dynamic? How can it, how can it become a strategic leader when it's often seen as uh, literally physically back of the house or in hospitals, literally physically in the basement um, where the trucks show up and, and, and is not perhaps always got a seat at the, uh, the C-suite table? Yep. First of all, I think um, you did a pretty good job in reading through the materials because everything you explained, I couldn't have explained it better. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't want an examination, but you, no. you passed, uh, <laughs> passed greatly. Um, yeah, let, let, I, I just had a discussion this morning. So based on the new book, I'm, I'm lecturing at different forums and Somebody else also asked me, like, yeah, how do we move supply chain from the back room to the boardroom? And that was the yeah. analogy we used this uh, morning. And um, yeah, what you what you said is true. Eh? And and my primary experience is more in manufacturing companies. Uh, and I would say that supply chain is poorly understood in the boardroom. Uh, and and uh, if we want to move supply chain from the from the back room to the boardroom, we have a lot of education to do, right? Um, and uh, yeah, the the fact that it's poorly understood, I would say, leads to two elements. That um, on the one hand, it means that many organizations think that supply chain is a lemon, yeah? and lemons are there to be squeezed, right? So. Uh, if you are looking to reduce costs uh, with five or ten percent, or we are looking for some extra cash because we need to do some investments, then we just ask supply chain to reduce inventories with five percent because inventory is cash, and reducing inventory uh, generates uh, cash. Um, and and supply chain is also too flexible because in general, when the when we start squeezing the supply chain lemon, we, as supply chain, we make it happen, right? So uh, we've also not necessarily do, done a good job to, to, by just delivering on those promises, we've not necessarily been educating the boardroom in a, in a good way that supply chain is more than just a lemon to, to be squeezed. It also has led to the fact that the, the primary, the the primary focus or the primary design of supply chain is almost on cost. And we, we, see, we see it as a cost. And as, as you rightly described, um, yes, supply chain is like just the, the flip side of, of the value proposition. How do we want to stand out in the market? What do we try to achieve? Well, the, the, um, the supply chain is the flip side of the coin. Yeah? And okay, uh, you, you can, uh, you, you cannot drive the service of Etihad with the fleet of uh, and, and the cost of a Southwest uh, or, or any low cost airline. So what, what we want to achieve has an impact on our supply chain, the assets uh, we need. And, and without being the expert in, in healthcare, if I would need to map uh, so the, the strategy model I often use is the one of Tracy and Weertsma. And they say, okay, their book is called The Discipline of Market Leaders. They have studied market leaders. And they say, there's two observations. Market leaders make a choice. That's one. They make a strategic choice. Either I want to have the best product or service. Either I want to create a total solution. Or the, either I go for the lowest price. But, but these are three almost archetypes of strategies which you find back in any industry. If you go to feed, food retail, you have hard discounters focused on price. You have total solution players, the traditional supermarket, A, B, and C brands, and you have the premium upscale brands. Uh, like I think in the US you have, um, uh, how is it called? Um, 
I mean, uh, like the um, food food farmers market, or um, right. yeah, so locally grown, anti-allergen, right. organic, yeah. organic. That's it. That's that's right. the upscale uh, positioning. And if I would link it to to healthcare, I could imagine that we say, uh, well, who'd, some healthcare institutes really want to focus on having the best treatment, right? And uh, they want to be known because they are basically the best one to treat a certain symptom or a certain disease, and that's that's what differentiates them from others. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I could imagine that that in the healthcare market, there are people who say, no, we want to be known for the lowest price and the lowest cost. And uh, we we give decent quality, uh, we provide decent quality healthcare, uh, but our primary objective is to do it at at the lowest cost. And I could even imagine that there are uh, uh, healthcare institutes or providers say, I want to to create a total service and um, yeah, maybe, maybe you need some treatment, but also uh, you you want to have a space to stay or relax. Well, we will create a total solution which covers your total problem. That's that's what Tracy right. Avishima would call customer intimacy. And I'm not sure by how far that is the case, but that's just applying that strategy model to healthcare. If you do that, the the underlying operating model and the offer, the underlying supply chain will be very different. If I want to focus on, on lowest price, I need to focus on efficiency. So I will focus on treatments where there is a lot of volume because I want to fo- if I want to see efficiency, I need to have a high volume. So anything which is a bit more exotic, I will not do it. Mm. Right? I want to focus on efficiency. I want to focus on volume. And it's like here in Europe, it's Ryanair. Ryanair is a low-cost airline. If it were possible, they, they, they leave you up via one door while at the same time leaving the passengers out via the other door eh? and, <laughs> and, and having a cleaning crew in between. Right. But that's, a, that's efficiency, right? A plane only brings revenues when it's in the air. So you want yes. to minimize the turnaround time. It's scary from a service perspective, but hey, okay, you can fly from Brussels to Barcelona for 50 euros. No worries. Mm. Um that's operational excellence. That's completely different from the healthcare supply chain if I go for product leadership. If I want to be the best in a specific type of treatment or disease, yeah, most probably I need to have very specialized equipment and infrastructure. It could be that I say, but it's not just about the infrastructure. It's, it's also about all the supplies I need to then execute a certain treatment. And, and most probably it's much more difficult to load that equipment at a constant load. That's mm. that's the name of the game in the operational excellence. Yeah, if I want to have the best uh, the best treatment and the best quality, more expensive, more complex, so a more complex supply chain. That's complexity. Yeah? Operational excellence is all about simplicity and efficiency. And then you have the total solution. Uh, t- total solution is typically offering a wider range of services like, hey, okay, but um, um, again, I'm not the healthcare expert. The best thing I can think of is that you say, okay, you need to have a treatment, but instead of having you travel too far, we provide a local accommodation. Uh, Maybe you need to, at the same time, be on a certain diet. So we also provide you the food and the, mm-hmm. and the right diet that's that's creating the, the, the total solution, which again means that, yeah, but next to having the hospital equipment, yeah, I might need to have uh, housing for people to rest for a certain period. I might need to have a catering, which allows me to quite flexibly also have dietary restrictions, not just within the hospital, but also outside of, of, of a hospital. And again, that creates a different type of supply chain uh, challenge at a different cost and at a different investment level. The cheapest is always the operational excellence. The most expensive is typically one, the product leader, the one who has the best treatment or the most specific treatment, highest investment level, and typically also higher cost level. In in a in a commercial or, or in a in a profit for profit situation, yeah, the, the, the question is what's the bank for the buck? A higher mm-hmm. investment is fine, 
as long as I, I can drive a higher price, a higher premium. Yeah? So in, in Europe, a, a lot of the, there's not a lot of private healthcare. I believe that's different in the US. So if, if you look at private healthcare, yeah, if the investment is higher, that's fine as long as the, as, the, as the customer, in this case, the patient is willing to pay the higher price, either from himself or either by having the right type of insurance. And, and maybe right. that's a, lo a longer answer than you had anticipated. But th th those are some of the thoughts that that supply chain triangle and the strategy, if I would need to map it to, to a healthcare environment, what that triggers would mean. So, so you're absolutely correct. Uh, in healthcare, um, a, a major healthcare provider is, is looking to be the best of breed. They're looking to uh, differentiate themselves uh, from their competitors. Uh, they want to offer the best care, the highest technology, the best customer experience. And all of those things that you mentioned, um, uh, the large players will have, you know, they, they may have hotels on site. They may, uh, you know, have provide special dietary requirements, all of that. Um, and then even if you get down to the nuts and bolts of the actual uh, surgery, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the turnaround time that you mentioned in terms of operational excellence uh, and high volume providers, that's very important in the surgery department. Uh, you know, I, how many of a certain procedure can we do within a day? And then, um, and do we have everything that we need to support that procedure? And that's, that's supply chain, right? And, and then there's cultural things that where supply chain begins and ends in healthcare is a is another large discussion, but basically supply chain provides everything. Um, but then, then the, uh, um, the usage of that, the utilization of that has to be very tight, very controlled in order to get that turnaround that you mentioned that in a manufacturing environment would be important. But what, so, so again, those are the connection points. But what, you, what, what I wanna bring back to like moving towards uh, from uh, the back office to the boardroom is everything that you just described um, that within an organization, many of those, those uh, uh, drivers and those metrics and the, those value statements will be owned by different silos in the organization. The glue that holds it all together is the supply chain. Um, but again, how does the supply chain now become a strategic player and not just a provider, but actually step up more into that whole dynamic that you described and say, okay, what are we trying to accomplish? Here's how I can help accomplish that. Here's things that you may not know about because I'm actually providing that for you. And, and then how can it be more, how can it own the process more than it currently does in, in what often seems to be a passive organization? How can it be more proactive? Yeah. Well, there's there's two ways. Uh, one way is that you that you are able to convince from the top down. So, I think every every healthcare CEO should listen to your podcast and and say, hey, <laughs> I've listened to this podcast of Daniel and I've seen I've seen the light. We 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 I had this wrong for twenty years and well I well I agree with that hundred <laughs> percent. And, and uh, the second way is if it's if it cannot be um, top down is that again I had I had a, a session with with a large group this morning and people said that that we need to more do it I would say bottoms up or people said we need it's 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 very cultural that right and we need we need to we need to piece by piece bite into that cultural uh, aspect and. So we need to look for examples in the sense that we need to we need to look for connections to the strategy, and it it I mean it. This morning I had a group twenty senior supply chain people from from production companies, and they said we're typically not invited to to the real strategic plan. It's like the strategic plan is between the business people and and finance. Supply chain is not around the table. So we need to look at what we have in a, in a manufacturing company that could be the SNOP process, sales and operations planning, which is like a tactical balancing process. And again, if I would need to re reflect on hospitals, it could be that we say, okay, you know, how, what, what is the outlook on uh, key treatments and how does our capacity look like and where, 
where do we see lead times increasing and how how will we deal with that so not sure if a supply chain function would already have that tactical process in a manufacturing process it does yeah mm. if even if, if in healthcare it's not yet the case and if you say well in healthcare it's is the primary focus is for instance primarily on logistics yeah, then I would say, well, the first thing you try to do is from a logistics, maybe try to get into a tactical process where we say, okay, how does the load look like for the hospital? What are the expectations? Will there, uh, is the number of treatments uh, of, of A or B increasing or decreasing? And how does that affect our capacity and the overall uh, loading? And yeah, out, of that, out of that tactical question, you try to get into the strategic question because... I don't, there's always bottlenecks and if you say hey, but here is a bottleneck and it's an operating room or it's this or it's that, then the question becomes yeah, how can we optimize right and and how can we optimize that that could potentially tie into a strategic discussion because how do you want to optimize oh but this depends on the strategy yeah if i want to be lowest price then i'm looking for efficiency and say okay let's look here oh, but this doesn't fit in this doesn't fit in yeah so i will try to simplify to be able to standardize and to, to be able to become more efficient. Mm -hmm. No, if we say, well, we're not just about lowest cost or lowest price, but we want to we want to create top-notch experience or we want to create a broader service experience, yeah, then I will need to be willing to have some capacity yeah, lost with uh, changing from one type of treatment to something else or one type of operation to something else. And then, yeah, there will be a limit to the optimization. We need to say, hey, okay, we can improve with 5%, but there's a limit to how much squeezing on the lemon we can do. Right. If that's where we want to go, yeah, then basically we will need to expand capacity. And I, I, for me, those are some examples where potentially we, from a more tactical process, we might try to tie into more strategic uh, uh, questions and processes. No, that, that's good. And, and actually how I would, how I understand what you just said, um, how I would translate it into the healthcare um, environment is visibility into the, that demand planning allows the supply chain to become more strategic. So for example, in healthcare, um, generally, let's say the entire organization runs on the surgery schedule, right? Um, or, or, or particular procedural department schedule or whatever, but, but that's the demand. That's the patient demand that's coming in. And, and many times supply chain is downstream from that demand. They don't necessarily have visibility into it every day. There can be spikes in that demand. All of a sudden today you're doing five more knee arthroscopies than, than was expected. Do you have all the downstream products that are required for that? And what happens if you don't? And generally in healthcare, because they're not that close to demand, that causes increased inventory levels and um, uh, it, you know, backup supplies and redundant inventories and things like that, which then has all types of other downstream problems of expiry and, and, and increased costs and holding costs and so on and so forth. And then at the same time, the spikes will even go outside of the organization uh, because the manufacturers may not be prepared for that type of spike. And if it's a prolonged spike, um, you know, they might run out of product and then it affects all the way down the line. And, and that was one thing when I was doing some, again, you know, trying to, to, to get up on, on uh, uh, all of your material prior to this call. Um, you mentioned that collaboration is, is such an important tool within this development of supply chain strategy both for our internal and external boundary systems. And, um, and I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, because it sounded like from your saying the, the meeting that you had earlier, um, that if they're not even invited to the room, that that's, that's, you know, tactically it's a huge issue, but also politically, emotionally almost, um, you know, then they're not being seen as integral. So it sounds like collaboration uh, is a bridge that could, to the, connect some of these, these uh, differing values. Yeah, it is, eh? and, and, and maybe, and if first continuing on, on what you said, like of the spikes, eh? well, spikes is also something which allows to tie into strategy, right? We wanna get into the strategic debate because 
many supply chains are designed for cost. So if we see spikes, what, I mean, what, what from a cost perspective, we say, hey, we don't want to have spikes, right? So we, 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 we want to have a more continuous load because the spikes are making everybody nervous. The spikes are creating costs and the spikes are creating mistakes. And we have then ordered product, which we didn't need because the spike went away. And then we have shelf life issues. And this again also ties into strategy, right? It depends on who we want to be in the market. If I want to be a lowest cost player, you don't want to have spikes. Right? You want to have smooth running processes and the smooth rate goes, the, the better I can optimize the cost and the more I can minimize inventories of supplies or, or what have you. Um, no, if I say um, I, the, 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 the more specialized I, I am, I would almost say the harder it becomes to predict uh, the, the demand. Eh? And again, if, if the patient or his insurance are willing to pay for the costs, it could be perfectly fine that there are spikes, but then we will need to organize for the spikes and we will need to accept that there is a certain cost and that there is a certain inventory risk and that we have built certain inventories which in the end are not consumed. So some of that could be the result of what we want to achieve in the market. If that's the case, I need to, I mean, not, all, not all variability or complexity is bad. Some variability mm -hmm. and complexity can be the result of what we want to achieve in, in, in the healthcare market. That's our strategy. That's how we want to stand out and to differentiate. If that's the case, it's important, again, when people start squeezing the lemon that you say, hey, no, no, this is actually what we need to support how we want to differentiate in the market. It's a consequence of our strategy. And if the strategy is not clear, yeah, we, we, can, we can use it as a starting point to say, okay, or I'm happy to cut this, Right? But the, the result could be X or Y. We will be in that situation and we won't have the supplies to do that type of surgery. Are we willing to take that as a consequence or as, as, as a result? So I think out of the operational issues we have, this is where we need to, this is instead of just saying, oh yes, we will solve it. That's what supply chain people typically do and they right. do solve it, right? Right, yeah. And once you, if you've done it once, Daniel, <laughs> They think you can do it over and over Every again. Time. So, so <laughs> that's what we need to stop. No, before we just do it, we need to use those those. Um, let's say it's it's. Um, uh, how do you say that in English? It's it's the start. It's a potential starting point of a discussion which ties into the strategy, and that's uh, that's. Uh, and of course, then it's about collaboration because. I mean. In, 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 a, in a manufacturing company, I say, there is typically the salespeople. Um, and I say, see, salespeople are not, they don't have bad will. Uh, they are not, uh, uh, they are not malicious. They are not uh, villains, right? Mm. If, if, if they do certain things, it's quite often because they don't understand what is the impact on the, on the backside, as, as right. we call it. And so, no, so we need to do education. And all of these issues we have in the back end, we, we, we need to use those to educate and say, hey, is this really what we want to do? Do we understand that the consequence of that type of positioning in the market is this and that and that and that? This is creating costs, this is creating inventories, this is creating shelf life issues, this is creating write-offs, right? This is causing the cost to redistribute from point A to point B and then back to point C. So we, we need to confront people with, 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 with what is the result of certain things we want to achieve in the market. And if we have a more continuous debate or collaboration uh, around that, yeah, when, when the people who decide on, and I wouldn't know who, in, who that is in the, in, the, in the hospital, but people who decide, okay, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to differentiate. That's kind of the service level and the service portfolio we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. I would say it's about educating those people on what are the consequences of some of the ideas they have in their head on the back end. And that's, that's where it becomes two sides of the coin. Who, who do we want to be? And what's the impact on the supply chain? And everything we do here has an impact on the supply chain. And, and the more we get that debate going, uh, yeah, the better people understand that, hey, hey, 
I mean, this morning we also had had a former CFO, and he, and that CFO said, "I have learned, uh, I have learned, I need to have supply chain people on the table to help to make that connection, and if I don't make that connection, yeah, I'm basically making decisions on how to position and what to offer, but." without understanding the full impact on the cost and the investment level. Yeah. And if I don't think that's true, sooner or later I get stuck or I hit I hit the hard uh, wall. And when we hit the wall again, hey, don't just solve it, eh? a supply chain. Right, right. No, no. You, you say, okay, guys, I will solve it. But first yeah. time out, right? Yeah. We, we're first going to draw a triangle. We, we are going to draw three strategy axes and yeah. okay, let's use this as a timeout moment. Where is the issue in the triangle? Yeah, who do we want to be in the market? Like, how, how crucial is this? Um, what, what, what is the consequence from what we are going to achieve in, in, in the market? So, instead of just fixing things um, and right. being an excellent plumber. Um, at some point, we also say, no, well, may, maybe instead of just fixing this hole, uh, we need to start talking about uh, uh, creating a new sewage and uh, also what's the plan we want to lay out and how heavy the type of sewage is that we uh, need. <laughs> so, so I, again, you're making me think then that sort of the message that you're, that you're advocating is that supply chain leaders have to own their own destiny. And and rather than maybe again being wait, being waiting to be invited to the table, they have to ask uh, you know to be a participant on the table and actually drive the discussion. And and I think then that leads me to the question of metrics and analytics, um, because clearly if if uh, I mean I could tell a good story to my finance to my CFO to you know and, and again in healthcare to clinical leaders or or um, operational leaders, um, but everybody's gonna be, uh, you know, want to see the metrics, want to see the dashboards, wants to see the things that show that you're moving the needle in some way that's both relevant to them and to the organization. So could you talk a little bit about um, analytics and what type of performance metrics do you recommend supply chain organizations focus on in order to control their own destiny tell their own story and be a driver rather than in the backseat of the bus. Yeah. Well, that, that triggers two things with me. I mean, first of all, what I've seen is that um, executives, supply chain executives, operation executives use the triangle to, to explain to people and say, okay, hey, wait a second. You are, you are making a reasoning here from the cost perspective. But we also need to look at the service, right? Because many operations people, if their primary objective is on efficiency, they are focused on the efficiency. If there is a service issue as a result, it's not their target. They don't necessarily care. Yeah? Or if, if finance pushes too hard on inventory and inventory needs to go down, again, that could have service issues. And if we have service issues, you have firefighting costs, right? So... If we look at if you look at the triangle, quite often individual departments often have only KPIs on one side of the triangle, right? And the the, the least you should do is get that discussion going. Say, okay, hey, wait a minute, you are asking me this and that and that and that more from a service perspective. Do you understand that this is going to be the impact on the cost, and it could potentially lead to that extra inventory? which we're not sure we're ever going to use it within the shelf lifetime, right? right. Is, this, is this a risk we are willing to, to take? So um, the, the least you should do is try to um, get the discussion and the debate going because once, once you draw a triangle and you get, hey, hey, you're reasoning from this corner. Do you understand it has an impact here and there? And I also often say any decision is good as long as it's a deliberate decision and the different corners are taking into account. And, and in 90% in of the case, cases that just having that discussion, even without changing individual targets, already leads to a deliberate 
decision which takes the different dimensions in, into account. So instead mm. of thinking one one dimensional, we need to start thinking multi uh, dimensional. And and the most I think the, the the most tricky thing is that I sometimes see that uh, supply chain people get the responsibility for inventory and that they then often get the pressure from finance to reduce inventory. And, and this is where you say, where you need to say no, you need to say, hey, I can't take the responsibility for inventory because inventory is more or, linked, more or less linked to the way we buy, the way we distribute, which might be with supply chain, but might also be partly with operations type of departments. Mm-hmm. Plus it's, it's also linked to how we wanna be driving service towards our uh, patients. And um, I, I think a next step could be that you say, okay, I'm willing to take a kind of process ownership for inventory, but if you want to drive inventory down, it should be a shared target across different departments. So uh, making it into a multidimensional discussion and for some key parameters like for instance, inventory, making sure it's a shared target and not an individual target. Mm. Uh, I, I think those are some some uh, some practical things to do. I, I, and again, I think, um, I, you know, as I'm listening to you, I, I, again, I think the big message I'm taking away from it is ultimately there are techniques to do this. There are ways to look at it, uh, your supply chain triangle. But the ownership needs to be with supply chain. That supply chain needs to start thinking more strategically. And many times they might be the only voice in the room that is trying to make the larger organization see the different aspects, the different dimensions of the decision making. And one one of my uh, mottos that I say is a man with the plan wins. And how I'm interpreting what you're saying is that supply chain needs to have the plan Supply chain needs to own their own destiny. Supply chain needs to educate themselves on strategy design, and they need to push that within the organization. Yeah. And I I agree that, again, referring to production organizations, in many production organizations, supply chain is the only one who has a KPI on the three corners. Mm -hmm. Supply chain often is responsible for like, kind of availability or on time and full delivery performance like uh, are all the sub- supplies there quite often responsible for costs like logistics costs sure quite often also has has a target to reduce inventory sales is typically more easy like they are more service driven operations is typically more cost or efficiency driven and finance just looks at at financial kpis they right. they, they are in the they're, they are in the executive room, right? So they don't they don't feel the day to day pressure. Supply chain is feeling that day to day pressure and conflict, and it it come it comes with the responsibility, right? And you can complain that your boss doesn't understand, but if you don't educate your boss, uh, um, it makes you complicit. Is that uh, you, you are guilty as well, right? So, right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> So no, it's it's actually our holy duty to execute uh, to to educate the organization, mm. and I often say we, we need to behave like missionaries. It's like, uh, and sometimes we will have the feeling that we are preaching in the desert, uh, but we should we should never go. We should never give up, and we should, as supply chain passionates, yeah. encourage encourage each other to do that preaching. And uh, uh, okay. It, it could be hard at times, but if you don't give up, the, the message will come through. That's, that's at least how I look at life uh, nowadays. No, that, that's great. Uh, and yeah, to your point, if you, if you don't stop preaching, you won't get to the Holy Land. So uh, yeah. you, you know, <laughs> maybe you have to you know, drag them along, but either way, you got to get there. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I want to be, be sensitive to your uh, time, Professor, and, uh, I, and I think this might be a, a good place to end it uh, for this uh, um, conversation. Um, uh, a, again, my, my audience that I'm trying to gear these to is to uh, United States Healthcare um, and, and trying to advocate that the supply chain organizations become more strategic. And I think your insights will generate some very interesting discussions uh, um, with my audience. 
Um, I, I want to uh, mention again that on May 25th, your second book will be available from Amazon, The Strategy-Driven Supply Chain, Integrating Strategy, Finance, and Supply Chain for a Competitive Edge. And I will put all the links uh, underneath this to, for people to contact you. And, and I, I, I can't thank you enough for this, for this time. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy and, uh, and very much in demand. So um, th this was, uh, this was uh, very special for me. I appreciate it. Quite an honor. Yep. My big pleasure, Daniel. And uh, looking forward to continue the discussions on how to improve healthcare supply chains also. Mm -hmm.